A lot of people have asked me what I think is the best device out there right now to speed up the learning process when it comes to practicing meditation and developing their brain health. Today, we're putting two of the most talked about neurofeedback devices head to head, the Muse headband and the Sensei headset. Both promise to revolutionize your meditation experience through advanced neurofeedback training, but they do so in uniquely different ways that we'll talk about today. I've been using the Muse headband for about the past eight years, and the Sensei is more recent to come on the market, so I've done 12 months of training with that one, and I've had some really powerful meditation sessions with both of them. But I would say that one of them coaxes you along and allows you to take more of a passive role in the meditation experience, while the other demands some more active involvement of your meditation skills. Which one's right for you? Stay tuned as we dive deep into each device's capabilities, differences, and ultimately help you decide which headset best meets your own personal brain training goals. First off, let's dive into the technical specifications where you can see different design aspects that really highlight the engineering of these devices. Starting with the Sensei, it features a unique pair of headphones integrated with three gold-plated EEG sensors and seven red light emissions. Emitters. This headset is designed to stimulate your brain through a combination of light pulses, soundscapes, and neurofeedback to enhance your meditation experience. Additionally, it does include a heart rate sensor and it charges through a USB-C port. In contrast, the Muse headband is equipped with four soft EEG sensors, and it also includes a heart rate monitor on the central module. The central module will clip in and out of the band in case you do need to switch out bands at any point. But this is pretty much what comes out of the box. Unlike the Sensei, you do have to have your own headphones for the audio neurofeedback experience. But if you do end up upgrading to MindLift Coaching, you can get an extra sensor that plugs into the micro USB port to get full sequential QEEG brain mapping. Both devices use a Bluetooth connection to sync with Android or iOS devices, but there is a twist with the Sensei. It actually uses two separate Bluetooth connections. One is for the headphones and the other is for transmitting the brainwave data, which was a design choice that was made to handle the extensive amount of data that's required for running this device without compromising its performance. Now let's talk about the practical impact of these devices on your meditation practice and overall brain health. Ideally, we wanna have some structure here here, we begin with initial measurements of our brain function to establish a baseline, followed by targeted training sessions designed to create real tangible changes in our mental state. Finally, we look at the training sessions themselves as well as post-training measurements to assess improvements and motivate our continued practice and use. So out of the box, the Muse headband bases your progress with the data of your actual meditation sessions. So as of now, it's not really doing a snapshot baseline of your brain function before you start training, unlike the Sensei does with measuring ERP and peak alpha measurements. With the Muse over time, you can track your meditation neurofeedback scores and monitor your progress while tracking improvement of your meditation sessions, which is great. I've done a lot of videos about taking more of an active role with the Muse headband and I'll link them below. Basically, if you can use the Muse to sustain your attention on a meditation object for long periods of time, you can experience some pretty powerful meditation sessions. But for those of you who are just starting out with meditation and are less advanced, just using the Muse Neurofeedback to guide your attention should really help you feel relaxed and attentive and feeling like you're making progress in your meditation practice. And the Neurofeedback helps guide you because if you get too intense, you hear a lot of wind and waves on the soundscape. If you relax just enough, you'll hear uh, birds chirping. That's the positive reward on the Muse Neurofeedback. You'll hear the surf and the wind die down. It'll become very serene. What I like to do is use the birds chirping as that guidepost of, okay, I'm within alpha, I'm relaxed enough, but not too intense. I'm right in that sweet spot on that energy center to get the positive Muse Neurofeedback through the audio soundscape and just hold that for as long as I can. Switching to the Sensei headset, this device takes initial measurements to a whole new level. It has reaction time testing with event related potentials or ERPs. And it has these boost sessions where it measures your peak alpha and then it uses these soundscapes and near infrared light to increase your peak alpha and induce various different brain states. Personally, I think this device has a more reliable felt sense of change shift than the Muse, which potentially could make the user more likely to continue using it over a long period of time. Since it does track those brain metrics over time like peak alpha and ERPs, so you can evaluate your brain health along the way. 
So I think that Muse definitely will relax people, but if you're not an advanced meditator, you might not get as dramatic of a shift of your state as what I experienced with Sensei, which is more of a passive experience through the red light stimulation and soundscapes. So there's the potential that people might be more likely to use the sensei over a long period of time because they actually felt that shift in their mental state to make them feel like they're getting something out of the meditation sessions. Now, as we'll talk about in a bit, sensei is quite a bit more expensive than the Muse. So we're really gonna have to justify if that price is right for you or not. And I should mention that sensei does track these brain metrics over time, such as peak alpha and ERPs. So you can actually evaluate your brain health along the way. Sensei is the first device that I've seen that really targets peak alpha waves using this blend of auditory tones and photobiomodulation. And we know that peak alpha has been associated with brain health, age, and even IQ scores. Now I know that Muse is not far behind on these metrics. They are working on peak alpha and brain age scores, which are somewhat controversial in the research community because these metrics are so new. So right now they're still in the research stage and not available on their Muse consumer app yet. So with the Muse, I find myself adopting more of an active mental approach, where with Sensei, you can let the technology do more of the work. So for practical impact, I give Muse eight out of 10, while I give Sensei a nine out of 10. Now let's look at the training variety offered by each device, which can be important for keeping things fresh and versatile. The Muse headband offers a really straightforward approach with essentially one primary neurofeedback brain frequency target, which focuses on mindfulness. It's really a powerful setting and I've never got tired of it myself, but for other users that want more variability, they might feel like they're doing the same thing every time. The Muse does offer breath and heart rate settings, which are great, but honestly, I don't find myself using them as much as the mind setting. And they have a ton of guided meditations in their beautiful app as well, so those are definitely worth checking out. In contrast, the Sensei headset has a lot more mind training targets right out of the box. It has a range of settings targeted at different mental states, such as calm, focus, and drive. And as I mentioned before, they have these booster sessions that aim to enhance your mental state using soundscapes and near infrared light. You can take Muse to a totally new level through MindLift where you get this auxiliary electrode that you plug in the micro USB port, and then you sequentially move it around on your scalp to get these sequential quantitative EEG brain maps, and then can work with the provider to get targeted neurofeedback. But that's going to be significantly more expensive than Muse out of the box, and you're gonna to have to work with a provider to do that if you're not a trained mental health professional. So with Sensei, you do have more preset options that you can use to customize your neurofeedback experience, but there are options with Muse to upgrade to different training programs so that you can get full-on clinical neurofeedback training. So for training variety, I give Sensei an eight out of 10 with Muse at seven out of 10. However, with the MindLift app and the neurofeedback coaching, the Muse package could go as high as 8.5 out of 10 with the MindLift coaching package. For user experience, the Muse headband is pretty straightforward to start using. You just place the band around your head and behind your ears, connect the Bluetooth and start the mind training session and you're off to the races. But to get the best signal, I do advise dampening the EEG sensors with a paper towel. With Sensei, they actually include this small water pen to wet the gold plated sensors in order to get the best signal quality. With things like ERPs, you really need the best signal you can get. Unlike the Muse, which just goes around your head and measures signals from your forehead and behind your ears, Sensei actually has sensors that need to get through your hair on the top of your head. So you do need to wet the sensors and part your hair and make sure those gold plated EEG sensors touch your scalp and then you need to connect two separate Bluetooth channels to your phone. So all of this with the Sensei can be somewhat more difficult to get a good connection than with the Muse, but it does provide more brainwave data for your training. Then I would say the most difficult setup is actually when you're using Muse with the MindLift auxiliary cord, because that setup requires EEG paste on the auxiliary cord, and you're probably going to need a mirror to figure out where to place that extra sensor, depending on what part of the brain you're measuring with the MindLift system. So that can be a bit overwhelming for new users. So when I was providing neurofeedback coaching, that was always a hurdle that we had to get over with our clients. In terms of the smartphone app software user experience, Sensei takes more of a structured approach by gamifying the whole experience. It integrates the training sessions into a sci-fi story-like format where you earn points, making the progress pretty engaging and easy to follow for its users. Muse is definitely more open-ended. It offers a lot of different training options, but it doesn't really have a story behind it. So it's more of a flexible, but less structured approach. And MindLift is definitely too complex for the average 
average user and it really requires a mental health coach to deliver the assessments and measurements and set up the training protocols necessary based on your brain maps in order to get the neurofeedback training experience optimized. So for user experience, I'm giving Muse an eight out of 10 while Sensei gets a seven out of 10 for ease of use. However, Muse does drop down to a six out of 10 when you add the MindLift package, which is a really powerful platform, but difficult for the average consumer to use. In the personal research category, we're talking about how you can use these devices to investigate your own brain data on your own time to conduct personal experiments and analyses. I know people really have a lot of questions about their brains and like to do their own deep dive into what the data means. So this is what that section is about. With Muse straight out of the box, you get basic meditation graphs, but there's third party software that you can use called Mind Monitor to make the platform a lot more versatile, especially when you combine it with the Mind Monitor online graphing system. With Mind Monitor, you can record and access the raw EEG data. And I've been even loading it into platforms like ChatGPT to analyze my brainwave patterns and get feedback about how my brain's working. And if you did do an upgrade to MindLift, you can use the Muse headband with the extra auxiliary electrode to get brain maps and other metrics like peak alpha that the neurofeedback provider can use to assess your brain health. MindLift even just added a MindLift AI to analyze the data and give you feedback, which I used in combination with ChatGPT to get some really interesting results. In contrast, the Sensei embeds most of that functionality directly into the hardware and software. The device hasn't been around as long as the Muse, so they haven't had nearly as much time to develop third-party options to use yet. But straight out of the box, Sensei is offering a lot more measurements than the default Muse system. With the Genius Pulse, you can get the ERP measurements, and the system often takes peak alpha measurements throughout your training, especially with the boost protocols. These options allow you to get more of a straightforward snapshot of your brain health without the need for external apps or tools. Also, Sensei did just introduce a guest mode feature so that other people can measure their brain health with the same headset without messing up your own personalized data within the app. So for personal research, I'm giving both platforms eight out of 10 for these various caveats. Now let's get down to cost, which is actually really gonna factor into your decision-making. The Muse headband is priced at around $400, which is definitely the more budget-friendly option. The Mind Monitor app, which you can use with the Muse to get access to the raw EEG data is only an extra $15. Now, if you did upgrade to MindLift for the brain mapping features and working with the mental health professional to assess your brain, that's going to be a monthly reoccurring fee at $400 for three months of use. So your Muse setup can cost cost anywhere between $400 and $815 for three months of use. On the other hand, the Sensei headset comes in at $1,500, which is over three times the price of the Muse out of the box. So let's unpack if that price is really justified. Sensei really does stand out as the first consumer wearable specifically designed to enhance your peak alpha waves using a combination of auditory tones, measurements, and photobiomodulation. It also includes the detailed event-related potential measurements, adding a considerable degree of complexity and value to the device. Device. You also have to factor in the photobiomodulation aspect of the Sensei, which Muse doesn't have at all. And to give you some perspective about photobiomodulation, other systems that I've tried, like Neuronic, cost $3,395. So the fact that Sensei's incorporated that into their headset says a lot. And honestly, I've tried both Neuronic and Sensei and actually thought that Sensei did a much better job of light stimulation on my brain than Neuronic did based on my own subjective physical state. So if you think about it, if you purchased Muse, Mind Monitor, MindLift, and Neuronic, that would come out to $4,210. Now it's hard to make direct comparisons, but Sensei is basically what that big complicated mess of hardware and software would be for a streamlined version of $1,500 compared to what all that mess would cost for $4,210. That being said, if you're just starting out with this gear and get quickly overwhelmed with all this talk about neurofeedback and brainwaves, a totally awesome and versatile starter package would be getting the Muse system with the Mind Monitor combination for around $415. But if you've tried neurofeedback before and want to go advanced, Sensei would be a supercharged version of that for $1,500. So for average consumer cost, levels, I'm giving Muse 7 out of 10, while Sensei comes in at 6 out of 10. So as you can see, a direct comparison of these two platforms is not easy, but I tried to cover all the different caveats here. Basically, Sensei is a lot more expensive than Muse out of the box, but it offers a full-on streamlined 
mind brain measurement laboratory with a never ending curated journey of brain trainings that can really take your meditations and brain function to a whole new level. There's a lot of studies coming out right now about the benefits of the photobiomodulation aspect on brain health and longevity. So I think it was really smart that Sensei incorporated that into their device. Muse, I would consider my go-to for entry-level individuals that are just wanting to get into brain training. And it's a great platform to start out with because as your needs or desires increase, you can stack on Mind Monitor and Mind Lift onto the original platform. I will say for those of you who have tried neurofeedback before and got frustrated because you didn't feel like you really felt much during the sessions themselves, Sensei really impressed me with the peak alpha measurement, which actually influences the amount of auditory and photobiomodulation stimulation to get your brain and peak alpha changed so that you can experience a state change during the sessions. Now I do have affiliate codes for both Sensei and Muse below. If you're interested, it really helps if you click those links so that it supports this channel. I can do this work full time and bring you guys the most cutting edge information about neuroscience wearables on the planet. So be sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if you feel like you would want to try the Sensei, Muse, MindLift, all three, and I guarantee that I'll respond to all comments and questions within the first 48 hours of this video posting. Now, if you're curious what happened when I fed my Muse and MindLift brainwave data into ChatGPT and how it actually figured out that I was a meditator based on the brain data alone, which just totally blew my mind, take a look at this video here and I'll see you on the other side.